here. Okay, so this is the Content Curation Success Mastermind for May 4th, 2015. And I wanted to just sort of talk about a few things, uh, different kinds of curation today. And so the funny thing is, you know, I work a lot of hours, but every now and then I take a little break and then I'm more or less uh, just sometimes I just look for things that interest me. Like I'm really interested in science fiction movies and that sort of thing. And I'm interested in following, for example, the uh, the development of the alien movies and all that stuff the franchise, and I'm interested in following um, Ridley Scott's uh, development of the Prometheus film line, and I'm also, also interested in the Neil Blomkamp's Alien 5 development that he's doing. So I'll search, you know, for um, Alien, sort of like Alien uh, prequel or something like that, and I'll get sites, and of course they're going to show you Wikipedia. But then there's they'll show you a lot of um, websites that are set up by people just like you and me that are just interested in the topic. In fact, they're so interested, they're really kind of fanatical about it, so they know a lot, and they're reading all the other websites. So. Basically, there are a couple of outlets for news in that particular, um, you know, genre or topic. And if you follow them and you always search, then you'll always learn the new developments. For example, you know, if there's an interview with Ridley Scott in some uh, larger magazine, the people that are following that will hear about it first and then they'll go ahead and put it on their blog you know with a link and so after a while you get a bunch of these things going on in your blog just because you're following that and you know that when the news gets published then you take that news and you put it on your blog and they're not even worried about you know quoting sections of the news well sometimes they do they'll quote um, sections of an interview and then um, they'll link back to the main site, but they don't always do it in the format that we've used either. I think it's pretty interesting. They'll just write it as news, and but inside the news, <clears throat> they'll have a link. This is Entertainment Weekly, so that's not really what I'm looking for. That would be one of the places that they're curating from. That's EW, so yeah. So if we go to Prometheus 2 movie, I I don't know if this is um, <clears throat> this this looks more like an official site, but I don't know. Let me actually I think it's this is independent, especially when you see them misspelling it like that. I already <laughs> actually sent them an email about that misspelling already. <clears throat> that shows you what kind of a fan I am. I think this is one of the ones that, um, you know, basically they, I, I'm not sure if they actually have, you know, rights to this stuff, but they have some way of getting around that. Like they're not really showing that. When you first tune into this page, you see that huge um, image and then it kind of disappears. Well, you can see it in the background here. I'm not sure if they had gotten that image um, from some authorized source or if they're just using the fair use. <clears throat> but if we look at some of these articles and you see, you know, positive Prometheus reviews, that's definitely going to be, um, you know, it's a curated article <clears throat> because you know, they're more or less putting in their own opinion, but then they're providing all these links to other publications. I'm not sure if this is the best example, so I'm going to back step. 
Yeah, that seems to be bigger bigger news as we go forward, but I'm trying to find some of these smaller ones that I've seen. <clears throat> Refinery 29. I wonder what that's. It's I don't <laughs> really find some of this. I don't find the ones that I was really looking for when I'm trying to find them. You know, it's when I'm when I'm just sort of doing my thing and cruising around, I see these things. And this to me though looks like just somebody's blog, you know. But you know, you saw it was high up enough in the search uh, results that it's got me clicking on it. So it's getting traffic, right? <clears throat> So this is also a form of a curated article, but it's it's not really copying and pasting con you know content from the other articles. So what they're just doing is basically they're rewriting some news that they found on another news site, <clears throat> and then they're giving a link to that site for various. Uh, parts of this article. And that's, you know, purely a very good way to do it as well. Outgoing links are actually good for you. They actually make you have more traffic and have, get you have better rankings as well. So you've got a link here to The Guardian, which is an outgoing link to an authority site where the Guardian says that this movie is the number four best sci-fi fantasy film of all time, so that was their reference. Please close. Thank you. And then you've got another couple of links down here. Fastbender confirmed that the film was delayed. So this is just basically going to be a link to where that interview is, where he said that. So you you open that up, it's the hollywoodnews.com. <clears throat> so this is kind of a whole different approach where you're actually finding the news out there and then reporting the news and creating a link to the news without actually copying and pasting any news or any section of that article. These are really quite popular too. You will you know, when you're looking for stuff out there, you know, you'll find one after another of these sites, and they're definitely ranking in Google because of the way they do this. They provide the news, they provide the links, and it's just another way of getting traffic in and around to not only to this kind of a curated blog, but also to the, finally to the target link which is why Google ranks it. <clears throat> you, to, you get to the point though where you're also asking yourself, you know, how can you use these images? Are these images copyrighted or what? Some of them are in the public domain and you can find public domain images on Wikicommons. <clears throat> and I think a lot of these places, a lot of these blogs are using the, what we call the fair use policy. So I was looking that up. In fact, I was trying to find if there is actually an outlet for um, promotional images for movies and stuff. I think Getty is the answer to that, and you have to basically register as a commercial outlet that's and give them the reason how you know why you're going to be using the material and all that stuff so it's a little bit too much for me to go through but you can do that um, and I was then reading up on the you know the blog in this blog basics about what they call the fair use which then brought me to uh, another website which really outlines it a little bit more technically. 
that you can use certain images depending on, you know, the purpose and character of your use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the portion taken, and the effect of the use upon the potential market, which means you're not, you're not trying to sell something that somebody else is trying to sell. If you're providing commentary, criticism, or, you know, some sort of um, treatment of the material that you're <clears throat> that you're borrowing then it's considered a fair use and also if you're not like taking a lot like you were gonna take the whole movie <laughs> you know and, and show it on your website and then do a couple of paragraphs about it that would not be fair use But also, if you do use the fair use guidelines, then you can probably, you, you are opening yourself up. So you have to put a disclaimer out there with a notice saying that, you know, if you own this work and you don't want it displayed on my website, let me know and we will remove it. And then you have to respond to those requests. <clears throat> And that's a part of the fair use policy. So a lot of blogs are doing that, and I think that's how a lot of these movie-related blogs are treating that, although I'm sure some of them do get slapped with notices. Hey folks, that's pretty much um, the lesson that I wanted to go over today with you. Um, if anyone has any questions or concerns, I'd be more than happy to uh, address those. Otherwise, we might, uh, we might call a day for today. And bear that in mind, I just want to show you that different form of content curation which is basically news reporting, usage of fair use uh, photos, and instead of uh, quoting and then providing attribution, you're actually reporting the news and providing a link back to where the, uh, the original news had been reported, or at least where you had seen it reported from. So a lot of people actually build blogs this way, and especially if it's a topic that you're interested in, it's something that you can do pretty easily and not too long. You can put something together that gets traffic. And if you're having trouble with traffic, is anyone on this call having trouble getting traffic to their blog? Let me, let me see that. If you're having trouble getting traffic to your blog, let me see a one in the chat box. Okay. Some people having trouble. Well, I don't want to single anyone out and say, you know, let's break break your blog down and say why, but let's go ahead, let me go ahead and just draw a picture of what I think you need to get the traffic to your blog. Okay. Is that, how does that grab you? It sounds like something that will be interesting for me to do. Let me see a one if that's, if that's true. I see a K and a yes. <laughs> I haven't seen a one yet, but that's okay. All right. I am so confident that this works. Okay, great. Piotr, David, G. Byrne, um, definitely let's, let's break it down for you. Now, one of the most important things that you're going to start with is your, your title. <clears throat> your title of your website. Now look, this might sound really, really, really basic, but I just can't believe how many people really kind of get these things wrong. And if you get them wrong, then you're not going to rank. 
you know what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is this. Let me inspect the HTML. And you, you may know a little bit about HTML, but every web, every web page starts with an HTML tag and a head tag. Inside the head tag is a title tag somewhere. This is a little bit more um, complicated than the usual head, but it's in here somewhere. Let me let me see. Find title uh, right here. Okay, so here's the title. <clears throat> you notice here it says you know right inside the title Prometheus two rumored to be prequel to Alien. Now they put some spaces on the front. I don't know if that was particularly smart or if it matters, but I wouldn't do it. But they did rank. You know they did get ranked anyway. Now that that title tag, that code, that bit of code, if you can see where my mouse is, it shows up right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it also shows up on Google. If I go back to Google and you notice here, this line here, is the title that I'm talking about. This is where Google gets that value from. Now again, you might think this is very basic or whatever, but believe me, it's like super number one important that you get this right. <clears throat> if you don't get this right, you're just not going to be ever searched for. You know, you're just not going to match the search. So notice I searched for Alien Prequel. <clears throat> and it came up with several things. And um, one of them was the thing that we were looking at. I'm not sure if I went a couple of pages in. It's possible that one of the reasons why it's not on the, one of the reasons it's not on the front page is because I did not search for the very first part of the title, right? The title being, Prometheus 2, what I had searched for was Alien Prequel. So, so those two words were matched in the title, but not in the first position. Okay, does that make sense? <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go back to the first page. And obviously IMDB, Wikipedia. What if I go Prometheus 2? Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's there's a really weird rainy weather today that's making my throat a bit gravelly, so I, I apologize for that. Okay, so Prometheus 2 still doesn't bring that particular one to the front page, and it might be because of that space in the title, I don't know. But obviously Prometheus 2 hyphen movie comes up. I think we looked at that one already. <clears throat> so that's matching exactly the title. Now, if you get more um, specific, which you call long tail, the one that I was um, looking at before, let me get back to that one for a second to make a point. <clears throat> And on page two, now you notice that this one starts with Prometheus to rumor to be prequel to Alien. Now it's on the second page, but what if I go Prometheus to rumor, rumors? Does it come up? Interestingly enough, that one still does not come up to the top. If I match it exactly, it comes to page one. See what I'm saying? Now, if I, if I am exactly matching Prometheus to rumored, and it's on page one, 
the reason it's not at the very top is because Google is trying to be a little bit smart and guess what we want rather than exactly matching. But what if I put the quotes around it? Let's see what happens. Then it comes to the very, very top. Okay. Now, do you want, how many people want your blog to go to the very, very top when they search for a particular keyword? Let me get a one for everybody that's following this and wants to get their blog to the very, very top, just like I just showed you. Okay. We got a lot of ones, of course. So if you're saying that, so how many people already have their blogs going to the top like that? Let me get a two. <clears throat> Let me see. How many twos do we get? Okay, G's got a two. So I'm seeing a two. One, two. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Well, Obviously, there's a couple of factors in play, but a lot of the most important part of it is this title that I'm trying to show you right now. So if you can exactly match your title to the keyword that you want to rank for and have it to be at the beginning of the sentence of the title, pardon me, you're way more likely to rank for that keyword than if you split it up like when I said alien prequel and then the same one that comes at the top to the top for this quoted phrase comes on the second page when I search for alien prequel just because it has these two words in the title but not necessarily in that order or at the front of the sentence so they don't come to the top of the search results but apparently this particular website has got some juice in it, enough juice in it that Google wants it to be near the top for you rather than being beaten out by someone else. So what could that be? I don't know. Well, let's take a look at it again. See if we can get any clues. Um, what we need to really do is check out like the the SEO uh, stats on this website for a minute. I don't know if that's stars. This is my Majestic Backlink Analyzer. I don't know if that's going to do anything. I might have to go to Majestic. Okay, there we go. So um, Majestic says, has a citation flow of 14, and 65 and 57, that's pretty decent. That's a pretty good trust flow. Um, the subdomain has almost 2 million. The root domain has over 2 million external backlinks from 33,000 domains. Now, that's not the best math in the world for that because let me just do a little um, calculation here. If you go, let's just say 2 million divided by 37782. And I rounded off the 2 million, but oh well. So that gives you fi about 50 backlinks per domain, right? Uh, 50, 40, 50 backlinks per domain. That's not too bad, I guess, but it's kind of a lot. I mean, if every time that I have 40 backlinks on one domain going to a particular site, that's kind of con considered uh, not to, you know, it's considered a little bit spammy, but I'd have to, you know, do a little more research to figure that out. So. Um, so it kind of shows you some of the the backlinks here. I don't know if that's going to tell us too much. Anchor text. You know, we we would get into that more. But I mean, even even whether it's spammy or not, you know, two million backlinks is 
<clears throat> there's got to be some good backlinks in there, If in fact, probably a lot. So that's probably why it's getting some juice. But it's still not competing with the other sites. It's not really getting to the top unless I do that quoted search, right? So uh, there's a lot of websites. Um, let me see that again and see if I can get it to the top without the quote. So <clears throat> from Prometheus to rumored alien prequel. Let's try that. Okay, so now we've got it on number three without any quotes, right? So this is this is a long tail keyword. Now what I've done is I've constructed here a long tail keyword that pulls, you know, I just sort of picked this website arbitrarily to be one that I wanted to see, you know, how I could rank. And how I could rank it was by picking this long tail keyword. And that gets me, you know, near the top. I could certainly add something else. I don't want to put Refinery29 because that's the name of the website. And, that, of course, it's going to match that. What, I, what if I said, um, of course, rumored to be that might actually bring it right to the top. There you go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a very long tail keyword. But that's, how, that's what it took to get that website to the top, okay? Now, what you need to do is you need to start thinking of your blog posts the same way as that. You need to start thinking of them as long-tail keywords that, if matched, will go to the top of Google. So that might be, you know, it might behoove you to like spend a little time playing around in Google the way that I'm showing you here to figure out you know which keyword has been you know over SEO to which one you might be able to rank for obviously the Prometheus 2 if if this blog was trying to rank they're not really cutting it because they uh, first of all that particular line is you know, getting beaten out by some other lines. But the, the point is, you put content out there and you kind of engineer your title to be a match for your keyword. And the idea is to create longer phrases that you do believe that people will be searching for so you can, you know, hit that niche. And it's it really is doable. You know, it's it's not just a pie in the sky. You can do that. You can actually do it. <clears throat> so back to my drawing board. So the title of your website is very important, of course. The other thing that Google usually uses is uh, the meta description. Let's take a look at this blog again and look at the the source here a lot of crazy code in here but let's find okay so here is the meta description Sigourney Weaver has signed on to Prometheus 2. Go back to Google. You'll notice Sigourney Weaver has signed on to Prometheus 2. It's exactly the same text. <clears throat> and, you know, I'm sure a lot of you already knew this. And um, those of you that didn't know this, it's great that you're learning this now because this is so important because this is what Google is going to show to your users, you know, when they search for you. So you need to make sure that you have that meta description set up. And that's what shows in Google. Now, they're also going to be matching by the content in the article. 
there's not a whole lot of um, content in this article, but I think I kind of showed from my demonstration a few minutes ago that the, the match comes a lot more from the title than anything else. However, if you don't have content on the page that is relevant to the title, that's not going to work either. Okay, so you must have meta description, very important. Otherwise, you know, Google's going to try to take some text from your website, but if you don't have matching text, it's going to just take something that's really irrelevant and show it in the, in the results, and it might not even give you a good ranking if you don't do that. So get the meta description, and then the body content of the post must have, you know, some substantial content relating to the title and meta description. Now that's, those are the three main things. Now once you get into the on-page, what they call the on-page SEO, then you're going to have to also think about um, H1, the main topic in H1, a subtopic, in H2 and so on and so forth. Important words in, you know, strong That sort of thing. And that's what you call the on on page or on site. WordPress does manage a lot of that stuff for you. So you don't really have to worry about putting all of that into your posts. But it's a good idea to check. And there are some online tools that will help you to analyze that. I don't happen to have them right on the tip of my tongue right this moment. Now, when I said title of website, that is not just the title of your website, but it's also the title of your content, of any content that you're going to publish, be it a blog post or a web page or whatever. <clears throat> so the, the way that, especially if you're using WordPress, or if you're editing your own HTML or you're using some other system, it's likely to manage this for you when you're doing a blog post or a page, like a web page, you have to make sure that the title, that what goes into that title code tag, like I showed you originally, is going to have that phrase that we psyched out on Google that really works, you know, that you've strategized that's going to pull you to the top for that phrase. That what ha that's what has to become the title of your blog post or your web page, and it has to go really in two places on your web page. Okay, let me show you where. They ha it has to go inside the title tag in the head And in the body of the web page, it has to go in an H1.
just like that. Now, if you don't have that going on, you know, you may not be able to rank that page. WordPress does handle a lot of that stuff automatically, but also one of the reasons why we have all these crazy plugins like Yoast and all that is because WordPress can be unpredictable as to what goes into the title, the meta description, and so on and so forth. So if you use Yoast, you're able to actually make sure that you have the title that you want for every single post or page. So you can strategize the title for each one of your pieces of content and you can independently edit the title. I prefer Yoast SEO. Yoast allows you to list out every piece of content on your WordPress blog and address the title and the meta description independently or in bulk for each each piece of content on your blog so you can make sure that you've diversified your SEO on every uh, piece of content and it's important also if you want to rank your website there's this is basically the individual um, solution, you know, in terms of individual content. But now for the overall solution, like the big picture, I want to give you another one, which is of course the website title and the domain can be related, but don't have to be. There, they have, you know, there's been word of this, what they call the EMD penalty, the exact match domain penalty. So if you got a domain that's an exact match of the keyword, it's kind of considered a spam, although it does seem to also work. The only thing is that, you know, if your website is only for one term, then you know you give a lot of consideration to that domain name like um, you know how how to get rid of mange on German shepherds or whatever <laughs> you know so that you have a, a term that addresses that and you're you're only selling one thing which is a remedy for that particular problem which I actually uh, we had that a few years ago, so I, that's why I know about that. Um, so the thing is that you may want to consider thinking of a name, a brand, or a domain that actually encompasses more than just an exact match of a phrase. In fact, Google is saying that they are kind of going to reward you for thinking of a brand that's not an exact match now that you don't have to get an exact match of a domain to your term and then you can also target a lot more than just one concept on that domain but what you're going to do is anyway pick that title that domain that's certainly the first step then you're going to want to you know identify your keyword phrases uh, the simple and the long tail the way I shown you today <clears throat> and make a big list of those long tail phrases because even if you don't use them all now, you'll have a big list of ideas for content as you go forward with your blog. And you'll be able to create more and more content around that list of long tail phrases that you have. And the more you fill out those, that list of long tail phrases, the more you're going to find your content going to the top of Google for those phrases. I promise you, I guarantee you, if you do this and you follow everything that I've shown you today, 
your blog posts and your blogs will start to go to the top of Google for the, the phrases that you target. So if you do your content like this regularly and you let's say you make a list of 25 of these long tail keywords and you do three times a week, that means you may have, um, you know, two to three months. In two to three months, you'll have, you'll have all those articles out there, okay, and they'll all be like seeds that you planted out there and they'll be growing. And as you then work the that stuff off-site too because you don't want to just stick with the on-site but you keep your on-site SEO good the way I've shown you then you can go out and actually do uh, social shares for the, that blog content in appropriate social sites uh, get it indexed if you use an indexer uh, press releases about your blog will also help you to get indexed and get ranked. There's a lot of different ways <clears throat> to you do off-site once you get your on-site SEO together. Just whatever you do, do not use some kind of silly mass uh, spamming program or you know don't go to Fiverr and buy backlinks and that kind of thing you can basically ruin your website. The good thing about though, if you do ruin your website, you can just get another domain and start over again. And I guarantee that you'll be back at the top again if you follow this. Now if you have a domain that's already messed up, you know, you might just want to move on to another domain. Okay, so I think that's, that covers it. What do you guys think? Do you think that is, uh, sounds like a good plan? Let me get some ones in the chat box if that works for you. All that stuff I was talking about. I see some ones coming in. All righty then. Okay, so then if anyone has any questions on the material for today, I'd like you very much to go ahead and put those questions into the chat box. I'll be very happy to elaborate on anything that you'd like me to before we call it a night. So I'll give you a little time to come up with questions. <laughs> I mean one. Okay, Angeline, you got it. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any questions or requires any clarification or would like me to expand on any of the topics that I've touched on tonight, I'm more than happy to do that. And if not, that's okay too. Um, Okay, guys, so that means that um, we are coming to the end of this session. I hope that you got something valuable out of today's session. I enjoyed presenting it to you and uh, looking forward to the next one. So in the meantime, everyone have a good night. I think you know how to find me if you need me. And I will talk to you again in the next one. So have a great night, everyone. It's Hugh out.